Hey guys, it's Silver Snorlax, and as you can probably already tell by the title, I've got something radically different from what is uh, normally a Pokemon-driven channel. I do have some graded Yu-Gi-Oh cards uh, that I had graded ages ago, actually. When I started to move months and months ago, I uh, started getting all my stuff kind of together a little bit. I uh, ran across these, and I found parts of my old deck uh, that I used to play with. I used to play in tournaments and such, and I, I did fairly well. I had like a lot of second and third place finishes that wasn't unusual for me at the time but uh, what I did was I, I found a whole bunch of them uh, had them graded the ones that were important to me at least um, and uh, can't wait to show them off to you guys uh, before I begin showing you what I've got though just be warned a lot of these cards are not in great condition they are not cards I planned on flipping and reselling anything like that these are just cards that are important to me so without further ado I'll show you some of the old cards that I uh, used to run with uh, the first one is Regeki Probably one of the most overpowered cards that was banned, gosh, I don't know how long ago. I believe it was like one of the first or second banned lists that Yu-Gi-Oh! ever put out. Um, this was among it. Uh, basically, it was a card that destroyed everything on the opponent's side of the field and had no drawbacks. So, it was really overpowered. Um, I played this card to death. Um, it definitely um, has its... Uh, War, war marks on it. Actually, this one corner down here, oh, I'm sorry, wrong corner. Corner down here is like completely, completely shot. You can see it's pretty creased. Um, I remember buying the card cheap at a card shop and saying, I just need it for tournament use. It wasn't going for uh, looks or condition or anything like that. I just needed it for usability's sake. So it came back as a four, but I really don't mind. Really good card. It helped me a lot, win a lot of tournaments and such. Uh, next card I had created. Uh, another card, almost, I should say this now, almost every card I have here is banned or on a banned list. If you play the, uh, the uh, TCG now, uh, as a lot of these were considered um, pretty overpowered then, and they're like way overpowered now. This is a card, Tribe Infecting Virus, was a card that basically allowed you to declare one type of monster and destroy everything on the uh, field that was that type of monster, uh, as long as you discard the card from your hand, which was very powerful, that opened up a lot of holes, that was, that was good for offensive based decks. So that's another one I had graded, also a very good to excellent 4. Uh, probably one of my favorite cards from when I was a lot younger, uh, the Thousand Eyes Restrict, which uh, I don't want to go into how the ability worked, but basically you absorbed a monster and then used it against your opponent, which was pretty cool. This is from Pharaoh's Servant. A lot of you guys these days who get who play Yu-Gi-Oh! and do Yu-Gi-Oh! I see limited edition runs and stuff of this card, which tells me its usability is still rather high. I believe it's either limited or restricted these days, I'm not real sure. But it was a heck of a card back then if you could get it out onto the field. I really like it. It's also really cool just to look at. All those little eyeballs and such. That's just cool looking. I really like it. the artwork on a lot of the Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, so... That's a cool one by far. Uh, I believe this is a card still used in the format, or it's limited. I believe it's limited to one. It was limited back when um, I when I played the game. This is Sanging, and you could. It was very useful because you could search a deck for a monster card. It uh, had 1,500 or less attack, which was pretty basic back then. Uh, highly usable card. So this helped me a lot. Um, helped me want, win a lot of tournaments, cards like this, so I had it graded. Uh, it doesn't have all that much value because it's an excellent 5, and even if it was, um, like say a gem mint 10, I still don't think it would carry all that much value. I just thought it was something cool, and something I wanted to keep around for nostalgia's sake. Let's see what I got next. This was more of a staple card back in the day. This is Dark Hole. It destroyed everything on the field, all the monsters I should say. That didn't include your magic and trap zones. Um, came back as an excellent five, which obviously I don't care what grade it got. Um, just a cool card, another stable card, helped me open up a lot of holes. Very useful card, something I uh, enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, this card, Imperial Order, it basically wiped out all magic cards that were in play, which in some cases, I used to play this one kid, he used to play like half his deck was magic cards, so I carried this card specifically just to kind of stop him, and it was kind of useful in other situations as well. Um, it kind of depended. It actually didn't function all that well in my deck, but um, 
by and large, it, it helped in little niche situations, so I kept it in there. Cool card too. I like uh, I like that that kind of. You see how it has like that sparkly look to it. That's one of the secret rares. That's how they did secret rares back then. I believe it was they were called secret rares. Fairly certain. Another staple card that was widely used. Um, Swords of Revealing Light. Also, fun fact. Uh, Legend of Blue Eyes was the very first printed set they ever did for um, Yu-Gi-Oh! So I got a couple of Legend of Blue Eyes cards graded. They were really nice uh, to have, not only in my deck, but I mean, just because they were part of that first printing set, so I thought they were cool. So, Swords of Revealing Light, that was a stall tactic you could use. Basically, it stopped, if I remember right, it stopped uh, attacks for three turns from your opponent. I believe you couldn't attack either but I don't fully remember and I don't want to read the entire description right now because I'm slightly lazy. So, moving along. Ah, one of my favorite, favorite cards. I'm so happy I had this graded. Uh, this is Man Eater Bug. Basically what would happen a lot of the time is I played kind of an off strategy. I always chose to go second and my leading move would be to place Man Eater Bug face down and the flip effect is to destroy a monster on the field regardless um, of position. So what I always do is somebody would throw out their attacking monster first turn and then send it to me. I place this guy face down because I ran three of them in my deck. That was the most you were allowed to carry back then. Uh, ran three of them and that was my opening move was just to destroy the first thing that they had out there which opened up a hole for me and I could then play around it a little bit. It also gave me a chance to scout so I really enjoyed using Maneater Bug. Uh, awesome card too. I like how he's got those teeth right there. Really cool card holographic too. He used to play with a number of cards. The number of cards they printed for Yu-Gi-Oh were not holographic but were still tournament legal. They were really cheap. So a lot of my deck actually wasn't too, uh, I guess you could say, quote unquote, blinged out. It was just something I used. Um, but uh, I did have a holographic one which is really cool. This is a card that came in some later printings. This is Fiber Jar. Um, I just kind of liked how it looked really and I thought the condition was really cool. Uh, were rather, rather good, and it did come back as near mint 8, so obviously the condition was pretty good. Uh, a card I used for a while, I forget what happens, uh, it's a flip effect card. I used a ton of flip effect cards. That's basically how I ran my entire deck, was just like, oh, something's different every single turn. And a lot of my um, strategy was based around opening up holes and just seeing what I could do. Slowing people down, opening up holes, I did a lot of that. A lot of... Um, a lot of uh, what, what would you call it? a lot of annoying tactics, I guess you would say. I was very difficult to beat because I just, I would just annoy you half to death. But this card in particular, what'd you do? Everything on the field went back to your hands. Da -da -da -da, five cards. So basically, you would restart the duel with Fiber Jar, if I remember right. You basically combined everything and then redraw. So that was helpful in a pinch. Or if I needed something to discard, that was generally something I went to if I was winning. Uh, next card I have up. Gear Golem of the Moving Fortress. That text is unbelievably difficult to read, uh, especially with the glare on the camera. But this is a card I used towards the end of my Yu-Gi-Oh career. Uh, the defensive stat was so high for a four-star monster that it, it just became incredibly useful. So um, I used it to start walling a lot of people because a lot of people used high offensive decks, and this was one of those cards that, that was able to stop them. Um, so I kept it around in my deck, it seemed to work, and then a lot of stalemates occurred because uh, I was starting to wind out, wind down and out of Yu-Gi-Oh! At that point in time, I wasn't buying as many new cards, so I couldn't keep up anywhere near as much. Uh, next card I have, huge card for me, and it's uh, also first edition, that's fun, uh, Reflect Bounder. This card was used fairly frequently and it stopped people left and right because basically you would bounce back the attack stat into their life points which was awesome because that basically stopped anybody from even wanting to come close to Reflect Bounder um, so that uh, putting that out there bought me a lot of time and uh, also I could tribute it I believe it was tributes, yeah tribute it um, for other monsters I needed to get out onto the field um, and it had that light um, attribute to it, which means I could get uh, my Black Luster Soldier out onto the field faster because I didn't run a lot of light monsters. So, really cool card. Happy I have it. Graded and encapsulated. This card I just thought looked cool. 
Summon Skull. This is from Metal Raiders, which I believe was the second um, ever set from Yu-Gi-Oh! when it came out. Uh, I just like the artwork, plain and simple. I thought the card was in good condition, it was worth sending. And uh, looking at that artwork and how awesome the card is, I'd say it definitely was. Uh, next up, Mint 9, Witch of the Black Forest. Uh, like Sangang, this was pretty much the card I used to help win a lot of battles. Actually, if I remember right, I think I used Sangain to get Witch of the Black Forest most of the time because of how useful she was. So I kept her around and figured why not have her graded as well. She helped me win a lot of tournaments, so definitely worth my time. Uh, next, Magic Cylinder. A uh, fairly staple card for the time period. Uh, this was probably mid to late in the, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! career that I uh, got this card and basically it sent back whatever uh, attack um, an opponent used against me, stopped the attack and then sent, it, sent back the attack amount uh, directly affecting life points. So it was a stable card, a lot of people used it and I really enjoyed it myself. And it came back as a midnight which is really cool too. And finally the last card I have, this card, I don't know how on earth it survived and got a uh, mint 9 rating. But it did. I had this card since I was um, traded for it, I believe. Um, I got it when I was much younger. I think I just kind of sleeved it and forgot about it. But when I was flipping through all my Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I figured this one was in really good condition and intended to sell this card once I had it graded. And good news for me, the card already has sold. Um, somebody bought it uh, from me already, so it's going to a home where somebody will enjoy it, which makes me quite happy. So, Thousand Dragon. Nothing too, nothing too particularly special about this card. It just comes from the uh, second set ever printed. At least I believe that's Metal Raiders. My Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge not all that great, but um, especially because I've been out of it for years. But um, yeah, just a really good condition card. Secret rare for the time. Awesome artwork. Why not, right? So that does it for me. We'll be getting back into Pokemon as soon as. Um, as soon as I uh, upload again next week, so you guys will have more Pokemon to look at. But I figured I'd break from the action for a little bit and give you guys some Yu-Gi-Oh! Change of pace, figured you guys would like that. So, once again, thanks everybody for watching, and I'll have a new upload again soon.